welcome to another episode of Mudlarking with Old Father Thames. It is exceptionally windy out here today, so this may well be a mainly voiceover video. Nevertheless, I'm sure we'll get some cracking finds, so let's get stuck in. Right guys, as I said in the intro, it was crazy windy out there today and hardly any of my audio recorded, so we're gonna do most of this in uh, a voiceover, but with a bit of a twist, I'm gonna do a uh, director's commentary kind of thing, so I'm just gonna do it off the cuff. Now let's see what we find first. Ah, the old pieces of leather. So here we go, we've got a leather boot, probably a work boot, 19th, 20th century. Um, I'm leaving this one behind clearly, but I love you can see the stitching there and look at how thin that leather has gone, so worn. And here are some similar boots, I would say. We've got another leather sole here with, you can see some little nails in there. I think this is probably a bit earlier, 18th, 19th century. I'm not so hot on leather um, shoes, but there we go. That is my guess, 18th, 19th century. Okay, and I'll leave these here. I'm not really one for preserving leather stuff, although I might start to do so. In my new video with Alessio that's coming up soon, we look at some leather items he saved and restored wonderfully. Okay, so let's just have a mooch about. Here is a little shell. Can't resist a shell. Not much to say about that, apart from it's pretty. I'll just leave it there, boink. Ah, the old sewer pipes of the Thames. This is salt glazed, probably early to mid 20th century, maybe Victorian. And uh, there we go, there's some other very handsome sewer pipes. Now this is a cutie. It is quite clearly a toy hot water bottle. Um, I took that home with me because I love it. And obviously we're taking home plastic from the foreshore, so that's a good thing too. Here it is again, because I got a little bit obsessed with it. <laughs> you can't get too much of a red hot water bottle, toy hot water bottle. It looks like someone's chewed the end of it there. Um, very strange, but that's cute. Now this thing threw me. I wanted, badly, I wanted this to be a gaming counter, but actually Flory Fo Flo Fines helped me out with this one. I think it's actually a Victorian to Edwardian penny round, which is a kind of a tile used in mosaics. Um, there is a picture there of some mosaic penny rounds. I think that's what that is. And here again, obviously we jump to the conclusion that these are Roman tessera, but I think this is Edwardian Victorian. It's a mosaic marble tessera, again, for flooring. A bit like you see on uh, shop entrances sometimes on the floor uh, to the doorway those lovely um, mosaics that we used to have when shops were not made of plastic and uh, rubbishy stuff okay right let's do a little tour of some willow pattern i always think those little roundels there look a bit like uh, an atomic symbol here we go so i stopped and picked up a lot of willow pattern um, today. It, you know, it's so ubiquitous, it is everywhere, but I just love it. It's sort of fallen out of favor. It's so common, like I say, it's everywhere. But sometimes you get these pieces that have just been broken so serendipitously. And look at this, you've got the three little guys there crossing a bridge, uh, three little monks maybe. I don't remember the story, it's some sort of unrequited love story uh, and the lovers run away into the sunset, check it out. Here we go, some marbled slipwear, Victorian probably, maybe a bit earlier, and some transfer wear, very dainty little piece there. And there, a nice little combo of three different types of pottery. Right, what have I stopped here for? We're scanning the area. Oh, I can see it. Okay. After doing the fishing episode uh, of tide travelling, you know, I was saying I wanted to find some fishing hooks. Obviously, 
I never find what I preemptively think I might find. But here we go, following week I did indeed find a spaded fishing hook, 19th, 20th century. So I've stopped in this rubbly bit for some reason. What are we looking at here? Oh, I seem to have found a... It's a bag seal. Well, that is a lovely bag seal there. There are a few little clues on it. I've said it's an, possibly an anti-tamper seal because I try and err sometimes on the side of caution. These were also used on machinery to stop people uh, tampering with it, starting engines up. Um, so this is probably a bag seal, but might also be an anti-tamper seal. Hopefully by the time I release this, I will have ID'd this particular little leaden find. You see there, you can see some of the details, SC maybe, or OC. And here's another type of seal. This is a general post office bag seal. These were used on bags of uh, postal items. And often you can make out the area, the postcode um, that these were used in. I've got a, a good blog that I wrote some years ago about these and I will put the link in the video description. Okay, so I'm hovering around this area. What have I seen? Oh, it's a modern coin. Honestly, I haven't found a really good old coin in ages. Okay, I'm discounting the... Um, quarter hammered coin I recently found. I'm discounting that because I want a chunky, maybe even like a Georgian coin, actually. Right, continuing on, here's a tantalizing little fragment. This is a piece of a toy plate. And I've got a number of these. Uh, I say a number, I've got three of these. Not all of them complete. I'll stick those up on the screen now so you can compare. But yeah, this looks to me like one of the later toy plates. And here is a rosehead cut nail. Um, not a great deal to say about these, but they're old and I love them and I keep them when you can see very clearly the rosehead bit, which is caused by um, the smith hammering, striking the head of the nail in four places and that leaves that little um, cross behind. All right, now I think the audio recorded on this, so I'm going to hand you over to me on the foreshore. I've spotted something sticking up out of the mud and I don't quite recognise it, but it might be something. So let's have a look. Um, <laughs> here it is. Now that's interesting. Very worm-like around the rim here. It looks like it could just be the lid of something, but it's heavy. So I'm going to clean that up and then we'll have another look. Nice brass item, I think. Okay, well here it is, cleaned up slightly. And it looks like it might have been some sort of dial that hooked on to something, but here, all around here is rubber. There's a rubber insert. So maybe it had glass in there or something. I'm gonna check that out and the information will be up on the screen in just a minute, but I'm really pleased with that find. It's an interesting mystery find. All right, so thanks to my um, brilliant followers on Instagram and TikTok. I do know what this is. I've cleaned it up. It is actually a tax disc holder. I thought it was maybe a reflector or a rear view mirror, something like that. I at first thought it was a dial, but then I realized that nothing attached to what would have been the face of the dial. So obviously, no, it's a standalone item. It's function, you know, you can see there it clipped onto something. Half of the clip is missing. It is a Cowie. 1930s tax disc and this would have gone on the window on the frame of the window of a touring or tourer car so uh yeah i'm pleased with that i got this really cleaned up and actually it now serves a different purpose it stands up 
as a frame. So um, I'm either going to paint something in there or use it as a photo frame, but I'm really pleased with that. I'm glad I took it home. Eek, modern padlock. Um, I can tell exactly what brand it's going to be. Uh, this is currently just languishing in my garden. Maybe I'll clean it up, maybe not. Okay, a beer or soda bottleneck, I think probably a beer bottle. Um, and this is late Victorian, uh, early Ed Edwardian or early 20th century. And I'll stick some up on screen now for comparison, but that's a fragment of a beer bottle. What am I doing here? Oh, okay. It's a bit of a pipe. Not really sure why I've kept this in because it's not uh, actually amazing, but I know some of you pipe people out there love these things. To make up for this kind of rubbishy find, I'm going to put some photos of my pipes on the screen. And here we go. So where I am today, it's pretty open to the elements. It's blustery, it's muddy. You can accidentally sink in the mud the further into the middle of the river you go. Um, but you get some good chunky finds around here. Now what's this? Oh, okay, having said that, this is a piece of mineral water bottle fragment. It's salt glazed um, stoneware, vitreous. And yeah, water bottle. And now, what have I found? Oh, it's one of these little rivets. Okay, this uh, is a certain type of rivet. I can't remember its name right now, but I will put it up on the screen. And here, right, I've put these in. This is a, um, I think it's called a clenched nail. It's, um, when you see nails like this with this bend, it's a good sign that they've been used on boats. And that little bend in there is a way that the nails were attached to the boat and held in place without using a rivet. So they bent the nail back like that. Now you can see just how muddy it is, and here, I think you can hear me in this clip, so over to me on the foreshore. Well, the wind just had me over, but I did somehow manage to finesse a style out, a one-handed behind me spring back. So uh, that's one nil to me versus the old wind. Yes, that is a true story. The wind blew me over. Um, instead of landing on my backside, I actually managed to stretch out my hand and bounce back up like I'm some kind of beat boy girl doing a bit of break dancing. Okay, obviously, modern sign. Loved it. I did take it home. I carried it on the tube with me. I look like an idiot. Here's another enamel sign, a bit older. Um, sadly, it had nothing on the underside uh, or nothing visible, nothing left. So um, I left that on the foreshore. But yes, I did take the no fouling sign home uh, and my friends and family obviously thought I'd lost my mind. All right, so we're going to go into a little brick section here. Um, I did record sound, but it's all uh, too blustery. Now, DBC, from memory, that's the Derbyshire Brick Company. Fletton, we have got right from my hometown, Bedfordshire, um, Bedford, Fletton's Bricks. They were uh, made at the large factory at Master Mortain by Stuart B, but also actually they did produce them in Peterborough. So that might be uh, Bedfordshire, that might be Cambridgeshire. Here, Haunchwood, 
love this name. It's kind of very, um, I think it's a real Edgar Allan Poe kind of name. I'm putting the information up on the screen and some images too where I can find them of the brickworks. There's a Haunchwood. Here, Farco or Fargo. Um, which is it? I think from memory these are American. I'm just going to consult my friend Nick Stevens' Thames Bricks website. I'll put the link in the video description. Dowry, dowry. Um, these were made in Scotland um, at that famous brick works, which is now escaping me. The name is escaping me in Glasgow. Anyway, they are made at that brick works info on the screen. This one, mystery brick, can't see what it says. I think it's got a bit of age about it. I can see a B, S, or okay. The M, obviously I took that home, uh, so that's in my garden. This, a cow and brick, I really want a cow and brick, but every time I see them now, they have either cement or something else on them. Taking the M, I'm not sure what that was. Um, and here we go, a Lucas brick. Oh, it's just come back to me, the Glen Boyg works, they're the Scottish works I was talking about. Lucas, I had to leave it. Um, Luca Mudlark, you might want to go and get that. Not sure. This looks like a Stourbridge brick. Um, not sure. Left that there. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> that's it for the bricks. Here we go. A little lead uh, token. 18th century Powell type token. I've confirmed this with the um, lead token telegraph. It's a random crosshatch pattern, um, don't know much about it, it will fit, it sits somewhere on the Powell classification system um, and it's been cut in half. There's not a lot to say about this, it's kind of vague, but that is a token. Right, there's a piece of a boat, one might think, I certainly think so, or a piece of something, maybe a bit of jetty, I don't know, but um, nice bit of wooden metal and here's me showing you how muddy and exposed the area is. Here's a little race between a uh, couple of tugs or something and ah this is nice. This is a handle to a pipkin I think. Uh, redware but that sort of black on the outside I'm not sure if that's sooting uh, or from the mud Right, here's some pearlware with a blue feather edge. Nice, very nice. Love that bit of bit of blue on the back. Uh, and what have we here? Ooh, a bit of tin glaze. Very nice, late uh, 16th century. Goes right up to the end of the 1800s, but really drops off by about 1840-ish. More tin glaze, blue and white, uh, English delftware. Here we go, another bit of transferware, chinoiserie, maybe willow pattern with a gold trim. Not too sure if what the fabric is there. I don't think that's earthenware. It might have been English porcelain, I'm not sure. Here, a button, but this button <laughs> is done for. I remember trying to clean this up. It's been out of the mud. There you go, I've broken it. It's uh, very soft, out of the mud for ages, gone green. It did have a name on it. Can't make it out, so there we go. 19th, 20th century fly button. Nice bit of redware here. Love this chunky handle fragment. You can see there what that motion I'm making is where the potter would have uh, pressed down the clay in application of the handle to the to the body of the vessel. Love that. Love that glaze also. Nice piece came home with me. And here we've got some more redware, uh, possibly. Hmm, let's see the rim, turn it over Marie. Uh, could be a cooking 
Oh, yeah, I'd say that's a cooking pot. Could be a chamber pot, but I think that's a bit of a cooking pot. You see it's really black in the middle there where it hasn't fired at a consistent temperature. There's some more redware, the base of a large storage pot, maybe really worn. Uh, and you can see some hand prints in there. So yeah, good old redware. I mean, it is everywhere, as you can see by the foreshore underneath my hand. But, you know, it's um, it's a good thing. And it does span such a long time frame, even up to the 20th, but who cares? I love red wet. And here's a bit of pipe fragment. It's tiny, but the reason I kept this, look at those little bobbles. Love that. Maybe that had one of those kind of wooden bark uh, knobbly pipes on the end. I'll put one up on the screen. We'll see if that's what it is. Right, so I think that's the end of the video, if I remember correctly. I didn't do an outro because it was too windy. Thanks for watching.